I'm hugely honoured to have been invited to be part of your celebration at the opening of the Thomas Mapikela Debating Chamber. Thanks College, because I would have been there if I possibly could have. Thank you Alan Thompson, Headmaster, and Aidan Smith and the whole team. It's been just wonderful working with you and digging out this history, both at college itself and in the Cory Library and just all over the place in the different records and letters that I've come across. 14 years ago, uh, the debating chamber, that wonderful old stone building, might have been demolished. In fact, if I think back over the council minutes, there are lots of times when it might have been, but it's still perhaps the most historic building at the school besides Upper House because it encapsulates the vision of Bishop Armstrong who, when he came out to Gramstown, didn't come to found a school, but he came to found a school and a missionary outreach, um, as well as to train priests for the Anglican priesthood. And it was his vision as well, of course, to educate the children of the indigenous population too. And after a hundred years, you brought that vision um, right back to its roots and you're honoring the early people who were educated there. And when I think about it, they were absolute giants. You've got Josiah Gumedi, who was president of the ANC in the late 1920s, Daniel Atanka, um, so many different clergymen. The first nine Anglican clergy ever to be ordained were trained in this room in carpentry and printing and in, in performing Shakespeare plays. And the person that we are most honouring here is Thomas Mapikela, who came from the Free State, um, who learned his carpentry here, who probably was part of carving the rude screen for the Gramstown Cathedral. And he was a giant in the formation of the African National Congress, as well as the founding of the national newspaper uh, for the ANC. And these people were trained, which has often been forgotten, by the headmaster of St. Andrews, who was the theological tutor of the diocese, and of course the great Robert John Mullins. And Graham House, in which grounds this debating chamber stands, um, was where both St. Andrews boys and boys of the Anglican institution were educated. And their education was very much the same at that time. And I think it's just fantastic that you have now brought this history full circle and that Thomas Mapikela and all those people who were educated here, as well as the Andrians, who were part of the opposition rugby team and made a newspaper with them. When I was writing The Boy Knew the History of St. Andrews, I think one of the most fascinating parts of the research was finding out more about the Anglican institution. It was very difficult to get material about it, in fact. Um, a lot of the records had been burnt. And, uh, but putting it together from various sources, from the Mullins Diaries and from Cory Library and from the College Archive, just brought the most wonderful stories to light about the Mullins family themselves, dear old Robert John Mullins and Jenny Mullins and their many, many children who've all been part of the school history and the boys of the Anglican Institution who lived in what is now Graham House. And their education was very much the same. Their teams played against each other as well. And of course, these famous people that came out of the Anglican Institution, I've got here, for example, Josiah Gomedi, who was the president of the ANC in the late 20s, and the wonderful William Phillip, who you have a bursary named for, who came to the school right in the early days as a small boy from St. Matthew's Mission, um, and then became um, a, a scholar and then a teacher, and ended up as the vice principal, and um, became a priest and a very, very eminent missionary. And I think it's wonderful that you are now honoring him with, with a bursary named for him. And there's also the first nine Anglican priests who were uh, ordained in the Diocese of Grahamstown, were trained by Robert John Mullins and uh, Canon John Espen, and all of them went on to have really interesting careers um, in the church and in the mission field. And so I think that this whole thing of bringing this Anglican institution back into the 
awareness of the college community and the boys themselves and reviving that history which has been lost for such a long time has been a hugely significant thing. And I would just like to say the sponsors who have given so much to revive the institution, the people at college who have worked so hard to research the history and to make sure that this has become a really important part of the campus as well as the school history is just fantastic and I wish I was with you tonight because it would have been just such a wonderfully triumphant thing to see it all happen.